long time ago. Something, uh, something really horrible happened. Yeah, that's good. Uh, this, the, this pillar of light appeared and it, um, it's, it leads, leads to another world and such. Um, there'll be chocobos and some summons. You'll like it. Promise. Hugs and kisses, Square Enix. I'm going to start off this review by saying that if you're thinking of picking this show up with the expectation of watching a 26-episode anime version of Advent Children, prepare to be disappointed. Unlimited is like a Final Fantasy version of Pokemon. It's geared towards the younger audience in almost every aspect that it has, from the story, to the artwork, to the kinda cheesy gags. Unfortunately, its name carries a lot of weight. Final Fantasy as a whole has more fanboys than more or less anything else in existence who will quite willingly flock to anything bearing the title, and that's mainly one of the reasons for its overall poor reputation. Fanboys watch it, notice that there is no heavy action scenes or romantic plot lines that some Final Fantasies are known for, stop watching it, tell everyone they know it's shit before going off to watch other shows like, I don't know, Dragon Ball Z or One Piece. But I decided to go into this with absolutely no expectations. That way I won't be disappointed. So, let's begin. From what I can gather, the story begins on Earth during present time, where a giant pillar of light has appeared baffling local scientists and putting on a very impressive light show for bystanders. Until from inside the light comes a monster that no man has ever seen. It's at this point I'd like to show you one of the few actual fun bits for Final Fantasy fans actually watching this show with a little game I like to call... Who's that summon? Well, it is a dragon, so choices are limited. I don't actually remember there being a summon with a gun as a head before, so... I, I think I'm gonna go with the design of the wings and say... Bahamut? It's Bahamut! Yes! Who nah? Oh yeah, oh yeah, who's the man? Who's the man? And then, again, from the light comes a monster, the likes of which no mortal man has ever seen. Who's that summon? Oh, this one's easy. The shape is a dead giveaway. That's just gotta be Leviathan. It's Miss Dragon. What? Miss Dragon from Final Fantasy IV? Oh, come on. Damn it. Should've got that. So anyways, the dragons fight and there's this big explosion and suddenly it's the future, where the story introduces us to the main characters, I and you. Twin children from Earth in search of their parents who packed up and left them one day to go to the mysterious world beyond the pillar of light known as Wonderland. And we begin as the children are following a rumor that a subway train arrives nearby once a month that leaves for this Wonderland. I don't know. Maybe if you stop being so monotone, I'll actually give a shit. So they reach the station where they first come in contact with the train. And I like this train, even though it's the type of thing that could give a kid nightmares. Like, look at it. It has eyes, for crap's sake. <laughs> okay, trying to get back on track here. On the train, they meet main character number three, Lisa, a martial arts woman who followed the children onto the train where we learn that she is a secret agent. Nah, that's a little bit of a lie. They never really talk about Lisa's backgrounds besides some flashbacks of her life pre-Pillar of Light or why she was following the children. Because this is all explained in the sequel novel, FF Unlimited After, which is yet to see a release date outside of Japan. So good freaking luck to anyone who actually wanted to know these little tidbits of information and background, because you never will. So after a little bump around in the train, the group finally arrives in Wonderland. The mysterious world that looks exactly like Earth. Oh wait, no, some things are different, like, everything seems to be made out of bugs and plants and... Okay, this is officially the weirdest place I've ever seen. 
And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Take a look at this. An airship appears above, shits out a giant crystal, which crash lands and transforms into a giant one-eyed mushroom. I seriously wish I was making this shit up, but I'm not. Then Lisa adds even more mystery to her character as she uses magical forces to throw the monster over her head and toss it several yards behind them. Although the monster is barely faced by this as it transforms again into an even bigger muscle Godzilla type thing that begins to terrorize and stomp the area around them. Until Kaze appears. That is not to say that he didn't appear in an earlier scene that I just forgot to mention due to it not being that very interesting at all, but I just thought that this made for a more dramatic entrance. So yeah, Kaze. So who's Kaze? Well, Kaze, he's... Um, well, he's kind of... A, Okay, he's just a guy that walks around with a big gun and summons stuff. That's about it. Oh sure, as with everything, he has a story, and to be quite honest, he's probably one of the most interesting characters in the whole plot. But the problem is is that he pulls a squall in that he doesn't talk much, and when he does, you never get the full meaning behind what he's saying, because he's being so depressing and emo about it. But Kaze, in summary, the closest thing to awesome in the series, doesn't talk much, and summons things from his gun in a manner equivalent to a magical girl transformation sequence because it is so damn long. And you have to watch it every bloody episode. But beyond all that, congratulations for you have just seen what I consider to be a typical episode of Final Fantasy Unlimited, because they all have the same basic formula. Use the train to travel to a new part of Wonderland and search for the twins' parents, be amazed by what they see there, monsters appear, everything seems hopeless, Kaze shows up, summons a monster, the day is saved, and we all go back onto the train to do it all over again next week. There are, however, many subplots in the series that reoccur apart from the main parent search storyline. The big one involving Earl Tyrant, as he tries to conquer all of Wonderland with the help of his four generals. But that story only really gets interesting in the final few episodes, before stopping dead and pointing you into the direction of the novel slash sequel, the equivalent of an up yours to anyone outside of Japan. Now this was not necessarily the show's fault, because Unlimited was actually supposed to be 50 episodes long instead of 25, however it got cancelled due to low ratings and never picked up afterwards. Uh, what else? The character designs aren't really much to brag about, given the fact that during the same time that Studio Gonzo was animating Unlimited, they were also working on the first Helsing anime, which had much better visuals. I actually rather like the artwork on the box set and the DVD cases because they give off a lot more of an epic feel than the actual show does, except for one part, and that is, um, the back cover. I mean, seriously, look at this. This image is the type of thing that spawns yaoi fanfiction, okay? Kaze is almost certainly depicted as a girl here, and I don't even want to know what Mackenzie's doing in the background. Although from what I gather, Unlimited has three different versions of the box, so maybe I just got unlucky by getting the yaoi version. And that was Final Fantasy Unlimited. Overall, it was okay, I guess. It's not something that I would recommend to many people, if at all, and for what it had, it really needed to be shorter. If they took what they had, cut it in half, and then used those latter 13 episodes to actually explain everything from the novel and other media, it probably would have been a much better show. And who knows, they could still remake it. It's not like they're going to be remaking Advent Children anytime. Oh, wait.